Well, hey guys, in today's video, we are talking all things salicylic acid face wash. What exactly do salicylic acid face washes do for our skin? Why should you use one? Importantly, how to use one? Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I am going to be sharing with you what, in my opinion, are the best salicylic acid face wash products on the market. Salicylic acid is a, an exfoliant. It has a unique feature in that it loves the oily surfaces of the skin. It can localize within your pores to help clear out the debris that leads to blackheads and whiteheads. It dissolves the glue between sticky skin cells, smoothing out the skin surface and exfoliating the skin, albeit gently. It is anti-inflammatory as well. It is an over-the-counter acne treatment. In addition to being beneficial for acne though, there are a lot of other skin conditions that can benefit from incorporating a salicylic acid face wash. Keratosis pilaris. That is a condition where you have a buildup of dry skin cells around the hair follicle leading to those rough bumps. Sal acid face washes, they can help smooth that out. Because salicylic acid helps exfoliate and is also anti-inflammatory, it's actually a really good option for people struggling with hyperpigmentation. It can help clear up post-acne dark marks. It also can help in lightening sunspots. Salicylic acid face washes are a great option for those of you who struggle with the skin condition seborrheic dermatitis. It's actually related to dandruff on the scalp. As a matter of fact, anti-dandruff shampoos often have salicylic acid as an active ingredient. But you can use a salicylic acid face wash to target seborrheic dermatitis on the face. Now, while psoriasis is uncommon on the face, if you happen to have psoriasis on the face, salicylic acid is a great option for thinning out and improving the psoriasis spots. Salicylic acid face washes are also, in my opinion, a bit of an underrated anti-aging ingredient staple. With age, our skin turnover slows down a bit, and that can lead to dry, rough texture. Salicylic acid can help encourage a more normal rate of cell turnover, smoothing everything out. And it also, in doing so, can help clear up and improve the appearance of sun damage. As salicylic acid smooths out the skin surface, you can appreciate better, more even penetration of some of your other skincare ingredients. How often can you use a salicylic acid cleanser? One to two times daily as tolerated. That is key, as tolerated. Different skin types respond to salicylic acid face washes differently. Some people are going to find that it's too irritating using it twice a day. Others are going to find that they do really, really well with it. It all varies depending on your background skin, how thick your skin is, how oily your skin is. Some really oily skin types tolerate using salicylic acid cleansers twice a day just fine. What are the problems you can run into with using a salicylic acid face wash? Basically, because it's an exfoliant, like any exfoliant, you can have too much exfoliation and that can lead to dryness and a tendency towards skin irritation. And for those of you who have a deeper skin tone, that irritation can put you at risk for hyperpigmentation. It's a very delicate balance and everyone's skin differs in terms of what they're going to tolerate. You're more at risk for developing excessive irritation from a salicylic acid face wash if you are using it alongside other things that also smooth out the skin surface. It's not to say that you can't use it with those things, it just starts to add to the risk that you may develop irritation and that's a clue that you may need to back down on the frequency of use. In contrast to alpha hydroxy acids, another family of ingredients that exfoliate the skin, salicylic acid does not make your skin more sensitive to the sun. In fact, it has some UV absorbing properties to it. Salicylic acid is safe in all skin tones. It, it's, it's safe to use if you have a deeper skin tone. One potential adverse effect, although it's very rare, but it could in theory occur, if you use salicylic acid to your entire body, to a widespread area, multiple times a day, you can actually absorb start to absorb the salicylic acid and develop salicylate poisoning. Now, if you use salicylic acid face washes one to two times daily as tolerated, this is not going to happen. This is not likely at all to happen to you using it that way. But it is something that we start to be concerned about when we're talking about a patient who may be using salicylic acid to a large body surface area, then it's something to be more concerned about. By and large, if you're using a salicylic acid cleanser as, as directed, salicylate poisoning is not not something that you're likely going to encounter. One of the questions I get all the time about salicylic acid cleansers is like, how effective can salicylic acid be when you're just washing it on the face and then rinsing it off? Does it need to be left on the skin? Truthfully, salicylic acid can be very effective with a short contact of, of the wash, of the lather on your face. When you go into the store, you're going to find salicylic acid in more than just face washes. You're going to find it in masks, moisturizers, lotions, things that are intended to be left on the skin. So 
why would you choose a face wash version of it? The advantage of using it in a face wash is you can use something known as short contact therapy. Now I have a whole video highlighting the benefits of short contact therapy. You should check that video out. One of the benefits is that you can uh, utilize the ingredient but reduce the risk of irritation. Now, it may take a little bit longer for you to begin to see results from that ingredient, in this case, salicylic acid, but it certainly is an effective approach and a great way to incorporate the ingredient, minimizing the risk of irritation. And another advantage of it is that you, as the consumer, can kind of dial in what works for your skin type with a cleanser a little bit more easily than with a leave-on product. What is the best percentage of salicylic acid in a face wash to go after? Salicylic acid cleansers ranging from 0.5 to 2% strength are effective for as acne treatments. That's what you're gonna find over the counter. And if a brand has anywhere from 0.5 to 2% strength of salicylic acid, it can actually uh, call itself a acne fighting cleanser uh, per, the, per the FDA. Uh, now, if you go to a dermatologist, you might have a salicylic acid peel, not a face wash, a peel, where they're gonna put it on the skin, leave it on there for a, you know, a certain amount of time. Uh, and the strengths that we use in office are much, 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 much stronger than what you would get from any over-the-counter product, anywhere you know, ranging generally from 20 to 30% salicylic acid. And those salicylic acid peels, as a side note, can be very, very, very effective for things like acne, hyperpigmentation. As a side note, I have a video all about the benefits of in-office peels, why I think they're underrated. So definitely check that one out. Salicylic acid peels can be incredibly valuable as an in-office treatment. But what you're getting from over-the-counter products is a much lower strength. Now, people are always under this misconception that higher must be better. Higher percentage is not necessarily better. Sometimes higher gives you results a little bit more quickly, but also higher percentages can be more irritating. So anywhere from the range of 0.5 to 2% strength is more than reasonable to pursue. You may find if you're particularly sensitive or have a drier skin type that the 2% strength is just a little bit too much for you and backing down to 0.5% or backing down in the frequency with which you use the product uh, allows you to tolerate it better. So it, it's really individual but at the end of the day, you can get equal results from any of these percentages, um, but at the lower end of things, you're gonna likely encounter less irritation, but may take longer to start working. How exactly do you use salicylic acid cleansers? As I said, the frequency with which you use them is very individualized. Generally, they are fine to use one to two times daily as tolerated, that's key. I can't predict what's going to be tolerable to any given person's skin type here just making this video. So that is, that's kind of up to you to navigate. When it comes to using a salicylic acid cleanser, you're gonna wanna lather the cleanser to to the face, avoiding around the eyes. And leave the cleanser lather on the skin for a few minutes. Really allow it to soak in, so to speak, and then rinse it off. Now here are some common pitfalls when it comes to using a salicylic acid cleanser. First of all, sometimes people are just overzealous with the volume that they use. You really don't need much at all. Less is more. If you use too much, uh, you run the risk of not rinsing it off in total, increasing irritation of any left behind on the skin. Because remember, in cleansers, it's not just the salicylic acid, it's also the cleansing foaming ingredients. And if those are left behind on the skin, that can be pretty irritating. You definitely wanna make sure you're very careful about using it around the eyes. Personally, I use salicylic acid cleansers from time to time, I really enjoy them. But one thing I often personally find to be uh, a problem with them for me is, you know, I get kind of in a hurry when I'm rinsing them off, and a lot of times the cleanser residue will make its way to my eyelids and I really, really can see my eyelid, my upper eyelids in particular, start to get a lot more wrinkled appearing uh, with using salicylic acid cleansers. Now that's not permanent. Uh, as soon as I stop or back down on the frequency of using them, uh, you know, I'm a little bit more careful in rinsing them off in total, that goes away. Uh, just something to be mindful of. How frequently you use them is going to be dictated by your skin type. Again, you can use them in the morning uh, as well as in the evening. I wouldn't gravitate towards a salicylic acid cleanser though for removing cosmetics, especially around your eyes. As I said, it can be irritating around the eyes. Is it okay to use a salicylic acid cleanser and then apply something like a 
retinoid or another active ingredient. You absolutely can. Uh, you can follow, after you rinse the cleanser off, you can use whatever active ingredient you're using in your routine, provided that it's tolerable to your skin type. I, I can't predict that. With salicylic acid, it's smoothing out the skin surface. So the advantage there is that your ingredient, your other ingredients you're using, they're going to penetrate more evenly and maybe a little bit deeper. That's a good thing or it could be a bad thing. It could make those ingredients more irritating for you. So it's just something for you to be aware of moving forward and be really mindful. Am I using other things that may be heightening my irrit ir how irritated my skin gets? Should I back down on the frequency? But yeah, salicylic acid cleanser, after you rinse it off, it can be followed with really any ingredient provided you tolerate it. That includes retinoids. A salicylic acid cleansers, you know, it, it may increase the risk of retinoid irritation, especially if you're new to a retinoid and you're starting it for the first time. Uh, you may, you know, want to st put your salicylic acid cleanser away. But, you know, if you've got really inflammatory acne, uh, you may find that you, you still need that salicylic acid cleanser to, to help with ongoing acne control. It's going to allow the retinoid to penetrate those thicker acne areas better. So again, it's very individualized. All right, now that you know what it does, what it's good for, how it works, how to use it, what are the best salicylic acid cleansers? Now this is largely opinion based, but you know I have used many salicylic acid cleansers, tested out many over the years, and I have to say the Cetaphil Gentle Clear Clarifying Acne Cream Cleanser, it's a very creamy, silky lather, free of fragrance. It has 2% salicylic acid. It also has white tea extract and aloe leaf juice, which are going to be anti-inflammatory. Now some people, find that their skin gets irritated by aloe. So be aware that that is in this product, but otherwise it's, it's very nice. It has to be one of the most non-drying 2% salicylic acid cleansers I've ever tried. As a matter of fact, this is one where I never ran into the issue of upper eyelid dryness with it. With it. Number two is very similar to the Cetaphil one. It's the Peach Slices Acne Clarifying Cleanser. This again is a 2% salicylic acid fragrance-free face wash. I like this one because it has Centella Asiatica extract in it, which is anti-inflammatory and skin soothing. It also has sodium hyaluronate, so that's going to help with, uh, that's a form of hyaluronic acid, that's going to help with uh, dryness. Now, for those of you out there who have keratosis pilaris, rough skin texture, but you don't necessarily have acne, maybe your skin tends to be a little bit more on the dry side, I highly, highly suggest CeraVe's Renewing SA Cleanser. I want to say this is 0.5% salicylic acid. Uh, they don't disclose that on the label. It's not, uh, you know, an acne salicylic acid cleanser, but I, 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 I do seem to recall reading um, or, or speaking with them and, and them mentioning that it's 0.5%. Um, in other words, this one is l less likely than the 2% strengths we've mentioned up until this point to cause dryness and irritation, provided that, you know, you make sure you're rinsing it off. This formula has a nice silky lather to it. It also has some other ingredients in the formula that are beneficial for the moisture barrier, for dryness, really gonna help you out if you have keratosis pilaris on the face. Uh, it has niacinamide, which is good for not only dry skin, but it's good for hyperpigmentation and redness. This product has hyaluronic acid, again, good for moisture. It has ceramides, which are lipids naturally found as part of your skin barrier and can become deficient with certain dry skin conditions as well as with age. So this is actually a good one too if you're someone who is looking to incorporate a salicylic acid cleanser just to improve the signs of sun damage, uh, photo rejuvenation, to smooth out and improve skin texture. This is a really good one, especially if you don't have particularly oily skin. I highly recommend this. It, it's, it's, it's a great one. Now, a lot of people though, actually, who have acne also have dry skin. So if you have acne and you have dry skin, um, I would suggest maybe also, you know, you could try the, the SA cleanser, but they actually have an acne medicated cleanser with 2% salicylic acid. But the background formula of the, it's the acne control cleanser. The background formula really helps address the needs of the moisture barrier. Um, so for those of you who deal with a lot of dryness, especially as it relates to your acne medications, ceramides and niacinamides, similar to the SA cleanser, higher percentage of salicylic acid. So if you, you know, you've got really inflammatory acne, you may need that higher percentage, but you want a formula that's going to really address the barrier issues that can go alongside acne and make you more prone to irritation. This is a favorite of mine personally. Uh, it is the Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Wash. 
This has been around for a really, really long time. So this has a long standing track record of being useful for people who have acne. I mean, it's just, it's been around a long time. I personally used it. I've recommended it to acne patients. It's reliable, it's good. It does have fragrance. Now, fragrance can be irritating to the skin. Some people are allergic to fragrance. Uh, if you are allergic to fragrance, you would wanna avoid this. This is definitely a nice gel formula and it works into to a really nice lather. But I wanna say last year, or maybe a year and a half ago or so, Neutrogena came out with a stubborn texture line. This is a really good cleanser option for those of you who you know, maybe have acne and very sensitive skin, or maybe you're just looking to incorporate a salicylic acid cleanser into your routine to improve skin texture, or maybe you have keratosis pilaris. Check this one out. Um, it's not specifically marketed to the keratosis pilaris crowd, but it has 1% um, salicylic acid. So a touch slower onset maybe in comparison to the 2%, but less likely to be drying and irritating. In contrast to their classic oil-free acne wash, this is free of fragrance. This also has glycolic acid in it, which can help smooth out the skin surface as well. So glycolic acid along with salicylic acid, these are good ingredients for those of you who are looking to improve hyperpigmentation, uh, whether it be dark spots related to healing acne or maybe you're just looking to rejuvenate the look of sun damage and you wanna incorporate an acid-based cleanser, this is a good option. And last but not least is La Roche-Posay Effaclair Medicated Cleanser. Um, this has 2% salicylic acid, a really good option specifically for people, in my opinion, who have acne, because in addition to the 2% salicylic acid, this has uh, micro LHA. LHA or lipohydroxy acid, it's a modified form of salicylic acid, so it kind of gets in there in a little bit different fashion to exfoliate, and it's a great option for people who have acne, blackheads, whiteheads. Blackheads and whiteheads are part of acne. They're called comedones. Uh, so it's a really great comedolytic face wash. Uh, it's a gel formula. This is one that for me personally, I have encountered some eyelid dryness from time to time if I'm not careful with the frequency of use, but overall it is a very good hydrating cleanser. It does have menthol in it, which kind of gives it almost a medicated feel to it. Gives a little bit of a tingle. Uh, you know, if your acne is very itchy, you may find that that offers you some symptomatic relief from the itch, but menthol is a fragrance ingredient. So if you are allergic to fragrance, be aware that the menthol could cross react with your fragrance allergies and cause issue for you. All right, y'all, that's the roundup of my top salicylic acid face washes. I hope this video was helpful to you. I will have all of these linked in the description box. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.